Have you ever, you ever been at an ice cream shop with a bunch of cool flavors, but just gotten chocolate because you weren't sure you would like the weird ones? Well, you might just be suffering from a case of food court syndrome, a term I invented. Now, new viewers of this channel may foolishly believe that I don't have the qualifications to create a whole new syndrome. But little do you know, I read the Wikipedia page for psychology. Also, I have practical experience in psychology because I have a human brain. Food court syndrome is what happens when you're presented with many choices, but always end up picking what you know and like because of the fear of not knowing if you'll like the other things. Like in a food court, with somewhere you already know and like, and some other places that look good but you have no idea about. Other cases of this include... When you have to choose what game slash movie slash book slash whatever to read slash play slash watch slash whatever. When you need to choose what toppings to get on a pizza. Well, in my case, I don't get any, but... Food court syndrome is very common, and that's because it makes a lot of mathematical sense. Let's say that the place in the food court you know is an 8 out of 10. In order to make it worth it, the new place would have to be higher than 8, but the chances of that are 20%, so it makes logical sense to stick to the place you like. Now, the chances of the place being below 4 might be pretty low, so let's say the chances of that happening are half of what I said. Now, this makes the odds of the place being better 30%. This still doesn't make logical sense. These are just examples. There are plenty of other probabilities. So how do you beat food court syndrome? Well, by projecting into the future. Let's say the chances of the new place being better are 20%. Well, it seems like it's better to stick with the old place, but you have to factor in the long-term effects of trying the new place. So let's suppose that for the sake of this calculation, going to the place you like is worth 80 happiness points, or HP for short. If the new place is 9 out of 10, it's worth 90 HP, if it's 6, 60, so on. On average, trying the new place will be worth 55 HP, but now you factor in the long-term effect. The long-term effects of you not liking the place are basically null, but in the 2 out of 10 times where the place is better, you'll be gaining more HP over time. So that's two outcomes, in which you now gain 10 or 20 more HP every time you go to the food court. In order to make up for the lost 35 HP, you'll need 35 new HP. The average between 10 and 20 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. So you'll need to go to the food court thrice to get more HP than you would lose. Let's say you go once per month. That's 3 months to get more HP. But we have to divide this by 5, because this is only 2 out of 10 possible futures. So we divide that 45 by 5, and you get 9. 9 times 4 is 36, which means that over a course of a year, you will statistically make up for the lost HP. And thus, in the long term, trying the new place makes sense. Now, in actuality, barraging you with numbers is a much less compelling argument than just explaining that all you have to lose is one meal, with lots of time at the new, better place to possibly gain. Also, the numbers I use were ballpark, and the actual math for a situation like this is way more complicated, and I probably made some mistake, but the logic stands regardless. 